Today on the YY Family, I'm going to find out why volcanoes are up. Volcanoes, eh? Oh, that's easy. And my dad is going to tell me how a camera works. My uncles travel inside a human body to find a virus. We'll find one. Microbes are everywhere. My mom and I are going to Africa to see zebras. And my grandpa is giving me the entire solar system for my birthday. I can't wait. Come along with me and meet the smartest family in all the town. The Y.Y. family. Mom can make it great to see that what goes up eventually comes down. The Y.Y. family. Come and meet the Y.Y. family. We got a lot of real know-how. Frank Fun knows a lot of fun. Ask him and I'll show you now. I can hear Frank Fun. When I land, I'll tell you why. What's the matter? Every person is a crime. Rushes to the baby side. What's the deal? What could it be? Just because the family. family. Yeah. How does it do this? How does it do that? Max is the one with the electronic knack. Machines are his thing, so don't go berserk. That's on your job. You'll find out how they work. That's me accepting the trophy I won at the bowling competition. There I am again in front of a cactus in the Nevada desert. And all these masterpieces of photography have been taken with my state-of-the-art autofocus 1200 extra zoom high-definition super lens semi-automatic compact camera. Dad, can you tell me how your camera works? Yeah, I'll yeah, show you. Come on. To tell the truth, a simple camera works pretty much the same way as a big deal fancy schmancy camera. So let's use a simple camera that you can operate easily. <laughs> All right! Ah! Hey, wait! <laughs> now that we understand how the flash works, let's check out the rest of the camera. Yahoo! Dad, where are we? Well, this is the lens. Now watch carefully. The outside light which illuminates your teddy bear passes through the lens, which concentrates the light and casts an upside-down picture of your teddy bear inside the camera. So the lens takes a photo? <laughs> no, no. The lens is important, but it's only one of the many parts of the camera. <clears throat> There's also the camera body, the shutter, the release knob... I beg your pardon. Ah! If you don't mind my saying so, I'm the one who does most of the work. Without me... You'd never have a sharp picture. I'm the star of the show. Don't listen to this, Victor. There's plenty more to see behind the lens. It's not nearly as interesting. interesting, interesting. What do you say we light out of here? Do you mean like the light rays? Exactly. <laughs> what happened, Dad? Well, just like the light, we have to get past the iris, which opens or closes depending on the amount of light outside. Hold on. I'll be back in a sec. Yes! After you, Victor. All right. Way to go, Dad. Hey, who turned on the lights? <laughs> Boy, it sure is dark in here. That's why this part of the camera is called the dark chamber. Clever name. See here? The image we want to photograph is projected here. Hey! It's my teddy bear! Now this, my little friend, is the shutter. It's like a curtain in front of the film. Indeed it is, it is indeed. You see, when the light hits the film, it triggers a chemical reaction. And that's how the image is reproduced. If the film gets too much light, eh, like this one just did, then it's ruined. So the shutter keeps that from happening by opening and closing very quickly when we push on this little knob. I get it! The film gets just enough light to make the picture. Exactly! Wow! That wasn't so tough. Great! Now let's go find out who's messing around with my camera. So it's you! <laughs> the camera! Oh, baby! I've got it! Oh, I've got it! And here I am with Victor and Basalt, performing the amazing YY Pyramid. 
I don't think we'll try that again anytime soon. I'm sick. Darned microbes. Microbes? What are microbes? You see, the microbes are so small, you need a microscope to see them. Now, here's one. Oh, yeah! Yeah. Now, the microbe you're looking at is a bacterium, a tiny one-celled animal. Now, like any animal, it eats, breathes, and moves around on its own. And now, this other, much smaller fellow is called a virus. A virus is born sleeping. It takes another living cell to wake it up. Oh, wake it up, Uncle Micro! Not on your life. If you wake up a virus, it attacks. And makes you sick. Is that why Grandpa Matic is sick? Possibly. But bacteria can also make you sick. Let's go find out whether Grandpa Matic is sick from a bacteria or a virus. All right! Sorry, Victor. It's too dangerous. We are trained professionals. You, you stay here and watch. The gizmo's all set. We are out of here. We're in Maddox's body. Well, can you see any microbes? We'll find one. Microbes are everywhere. There's one over there. Somehow, this bacterium has passed through the skin barrier and entered the body. A bacterium multiplies before launching an attack. A single bacterium can produce lots of other ones. <laughs> Bacteria attack the cells in your body. And that can make you sick. Luckily, though, we've got a weapon for killing bacteria. Antibiotics! The antibiotic attacks the bacterium when it starts reproducing. And because that's the moment when bacteria are weaker and less able to fight. Hooray! Grandpa Matic is cured! And not quite, because he also might have a virus. But we'll try to find out. A virus cannot live by itself the way a bacterium can. It's a parasite. It lives off other cells. First, the virus enters the cell and takes it over. It tells the cell to make more viruses. Then, the virus proceeds to kill the cells. That's how it makes us sick. Our bodies have ways of fighting viruses. To begin with, the cells will sound the alarm. This brings the white corpuscles, special cells which protect the body from invaders. Now, when the white corpuscles encounter a virus, they produce antibodies, substances which are specially created to attack that virus. So, if the virus comes back into the body, it's like finding itself in a minefield. That's why there are some diseases you can only catch once. We're nearly out of here. Oh, ah! Ah, Scopo? Yeah. Would you mind terribly getting off of me so I can breathe? The things I do for science. Who has all the answers about the sun and moon and stars? That would be Zygo and Magic. Who can tell us all about the atmosphere and Mars? That would be Zygo and Magic. Pick a spot in outer space, they've been all around the place. Zygo and Magic, here they come. the entire solar system. What's the solar system? The solar system is, first of all, the sun. There are nine planets, which all revolve around the sun. The closest and hottest is Mercury. Then come Venus, the Earth, oh, sweet home, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and finally, my personal favorite, Pluto, the smallest. There you are. That's our solar system. Enough, Fury. Come on, let's go see the solar system. Yippee! The 
Did you know there are two basic types of planets? Well, Grandpa told me there are the little ones and the big ones. He's right. Most of the small planets, Mercury, Venus, Mars, and Earth, are close to the sun. They're referred to as hard planets. Further away from the sun are the giant planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Well, let's check out a hard planet, like Mercury. Mercury? The temperature on Mercury is over 800 degrees! Did I say Mercury? <laughs> oh, I meant Mars, of course. <laughs> Mars is smaller than the Earth, so its gravity is not as strong. And that means... Uh, choo -woo! I think he just found out what that means. Yeah, I... <laughs> wow, that was cool. It sure is. The temperature on Mars is never warmer than minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit. Look, Grandpa. <laughs> Those are the moons of Mars, Phobos and Deimos. Come on, we've got a long way to go. Hey, somebody's shooting at us. We're in the asteroid belt. Billions of rocks orbiting the sun between Mars and Jupiter. Hey, is that Jupiter? Yep. Biggest planet in our solar system. 1,300 times the size of the Earth. Wow. Hey, that one has rings around it. That's Saturn. It's the second largest planet in our solar system. It's only 850 times larger than the Earth. Well, can we go to the rings? <laughs> I can fly this crane anywhere. No, Grandpa. The ring is made of ice, rocks, and dust. We could damage the ship. Well, the planets aren't very friendly. Is there another solar system we could visit? Well, Victor, there are billions of stars, but they're much too far away to visit. Ah, well, that may be true. Ah, but I already know at least one nice planet. I know, I know. It's Earth. <laughs> I could take you there with my eyes closed. Oh, yeah? Really? All right, you're <laughs> right. Stop, Victor. No, oh, we're not joking. <laughs> So now I'm helping him build a volcano. You can't build a volcano. Why not? Because it won't erupt. Why do volcanoes erupt? I don't know. I want to know why. Why? <laughs> Please tell Victor why volcanoes erupt. Volcanoes, eh? Oh, that's easy. <laughs> Where are we, Grandma? We're about 20 miles below the surface of the Earth, at the boundary between the Earth's crust and the Earth's mantle, the layer of molten rock that lies underneath the Earth's crust. The temperature here is over 2,000 degrees. Wow, that's pretty hot. Not if you're a dragon. That molten rock, called magma, is what erupts out of a volcano. You see, the Earth is made up of several layers, like a peach. No, thanks. I've already got one. Good. Cut it in half. The outer layer, uh, the crust, is about as thin in relation to the rest of the Earth as the peach's skin is to the rest of the peach. The mantle is like the meat of the peach. The mantle is under a tremendous amount of pressure. Pressure? Oh, you ah! bet there's pressure all day long, sitting around melting rocks. Why, do you think that's easy? Now, when the pressure builds up... Oh, I gotta get out of here! The magma starts working its way out. When it works its way up to the surface, it forms a volcano. But how does it get to the surface? Well, it... works its way to the surface through fissures, cracks in the Earth's crust. The surface of the Earth is made up of several large pieces called tectonic plates. Where these plates are joined together, you have fissures that the magma can get through. <laughs> Boom! 
We just created a volcano. Come on, boys, we're stepping out. Basalt, get us out of here. Where are we going, Grandma? Well, if this were an existing volcano, I'd expect us to wind up somewhere in the Ring of Fire. It's the area of the Pacific Ocean where several tectonic plates come together. But since this is a brand new volcano, we can wind up anywhere. <laughs> you missed the spot. When the magma reaches the Earth's surface, it's called lava. An eruption also produces smoke, ash, rocks, and mud. What happens now? Once the pressure is released, the eruption eventually stops. The lava cools and becomes rock. The lava down in the fissure will cool too and form a sort of plug. <laughs> My car! This is all your fault! Me? Victor wasn't even asking questions, so you showed up! We were having a fine time in the Victor, a spoonful for Daddy, a spoonful for Mommy, a spoonful for Grandma Eartha, Grandpa Maddox, Zygo, Uncle Micro, Uncle Scopo, and a spoonful for the salt. Wow! Your dessert! <laughs> Look at you! You have chocolate stripes all over, just like a little zebra. Did someone throw pudding all over zebras? <laughs> no. So... Why do zebras have stripes? Eh, that's an easy one. Everybody knows why zebras have stripes. <laughs> Just for that, I'm not gonna tell ya. Here we are on the plains of southern Africa. This is where zebras live, Victor. And giraffes, too. Whoa! <laughs> Getting so an elephant can't even go out anymore here. This is a good spot. Take a look. Zebras. Where? Where? Cool. I'm gonna get a better look. Hey, listen, don't get too close. Wild animals can be dangerous. Says you. No! Hey, zebra. Why do you have stripes? Because the store was all out of polka dots. <laughs> it's not enough to aggravate me. You had to go annoy a zebra, too. <laughs> Stop fighting, you two. Why do you think zebras have stripes? That's easy. They're for camouflage. Their stripes make it easier for zebras to hide behind trees. Cool. But there aren't any trees around here. Oh, yeah. You're right. Actually, no one knows for certain why zebras have stripes. But scientists have come up with several theories. Like most animals, zebras have developed features which help them to survive. When zebras stand side by side, their stripes create an optical illusion. This confuses the line and makes it harder for it to judge distances accurately. But there are some other theories as to why zebras have stripes. Why? Well, some experts think their stripes help zebras recognize each other. Look over there. Oh, poor little zebra. He's lost. Don't worry. He'll soon find his mommy. If you look carefully, you'll see that each zebra's stripes are different. See? Everything worked out just fine. Oh, I get it. The zebra recognizes his mommy's stripes, just like I recognize your face or your hair. Right. And it's not just mommies and babies. The stripes help the members of the entire herd identify each other. Oh, you mean like a football team wearing the same kind of uniform. Yes, good comparison. That's ridiculous. Zebras can't play football.
Well, Victor, what you learned today? Oh, tons of neat stuff. I learned that cameras work by focusing light through a lens and controlling how much light reaches the film. I learned that viruses and bacteria make us sick. Darn microbes. And I learned how our bodies get rid of them. I saw a volcano erupt when molten rock flowed up through a crack in the Earth's crust. And I learned that we don't really know why zebras have stripes, but we think they help keep them safe from lions. Sounds like a pretty big day. It was, but I still have plenty of questions left for next time.